Well, now we're going to take a look at how to generate a different or a little bit slightly more accurate gradation for the background, as well as how to modify the background. So uh, this one in here uh, does look a little clunky uh, in how it's rendered. The, uh, the strokes are all in the place, so we it needs some refinement. And so what I did is I generated gradations and then I stepped back from my computer and uh, stepped out of the room and looked at uh, my computer through my office door and just kind of made adjustments back and forth until the gradations more or less matched each other and so the first two variations are regular text and the, the bottom two are bold text and so combination of bold text letting and kerning essentially made the text that much more dense. Once I had generated the, the text and got it to where the, the way I liked it, I then was able to create a brand new character style. And essentially, this is kind of like a library that I can use over again. So the way the character styles work is you essentially start off with a text box. You make whatever changes you want to make to it. And it's easier to do it here. So for example, if you wanted to select a different typeface, you wanted a specific oddball size like 16. Maybe you wanted to increase the lighting to 30. Uh, maybe the tracking needed to be adjusted to something else. So we'll say uh, we'll keep it small, 20. And um, so that's something that's very specific. And you may need to call it again and use the same setup as you did before. So what you would do is you would click on your text box and you hit, get this out of the way here, you hit this little plus key here and it adds a new style. So now this is part of the library of these choices. So if I wanted to change this text over here, which is currently 75, this will go to the new style that I just created. And if I wanted to make this text over here go to the uh, 75, I can click on there and that would basically I get to choose where I want to make my changes. And the nice thing about this is that uh, you can make changes to the text and the, ch the changes are global. So if I double click on the blanks part of this choice here, I can go to the character information and here, for example, I can select this and modify the size of the font. So it's a nice option. Uh, and it's also an option that you can use to import into other uh, artwork. So the, uh, it, it takes a little bit of time. You just have to kind of go in there and make your adjustments and, and get a sense of what the gray values are. But if you want to steal my information and you want to slowly look at the movie, here's my first square. And it's, uh, it's set for 21.44. The font is 10. Here's the second one. This is 11, negative 19, 20 size font. This one over here, same size font, but it's a little, uh, it's bold for one. 11 and 153, negative 153. And over here, the denser of the two, slightly larger font size and a little bit more compressed. So if you want to steal these, you're more than welcome to. Uh, okay, so I don't need that one in there. That was just my little test run. Save change. Yes, get rid of that. Okay, so I went up to 70, uh, rather to uh, 95. So everything looks fine. Okay, I actually don't have to save this, so I, I won't bother saving it. Okay, so I'm going to open up my Lincoln document, and I'm going to attempt to clean this up a little bit. So first thing I want to do is I want to bring in my text. Uh, the uh, style guides or st uh, character styles that I just created. So I'm going to go to here, the style guide, which remember, if it's inside the uh, drop down menu, go down to type, and that's where that's where you'll find it. There it is. And it'll open up this dialog or palette. And uh, there's an option to load styles. And here's the style that I'm working with. Select that, open it, and it brings it all in. And now I just have to kind of sort out and make sure I'm organized relative to what I think is the darkest color. So uh, 
I think, if I remember right, the outside of his suit was the darkest color. So let's see if we can find that. That's not it. That's not it. Uh, I don't think that's it. I think it might be this right here. So let me uh, get a space bar in here. And so I'm definitely this back shoulder is a lot darker. The front of his vest is darker. His beard is definitely darker there. So let's see if that's his beard. Yeah, that's his beard. So that's going to be the darkest one. Okay, so the, the next darkest is going to be probably in the lapel. So, so that's going to be the next darkest. So that's in the right order. So this one in here, I'm going to go ahead and change. I'm going to, just so that I can give myself a cue, I'm going to call that 95 so that it matches with the 95% on that one. And this one over here, I'm going to give that a 75. So it matches with that 75. So now let's see what the next color is. So it's probably going to be somewhere in here. So I'll turn this off. And that, that's actually also the background color. And let's see what that is. So that looks like it could be right. OK, so the background color is that one. And if I screw this up, I can always change again later. That's definitely going to be the lightest. And I don't think there's a color in here at all. OK, so I've only got four colors. Uh, and I can change them after the fact. But I think that this is going to work just fine. OK, so I'll start off by selecting 95. I'm going to select the whole thing. Then I'm going to go to my Object drop-down menu. And I'm going to slide down to my clipping mask. And right underneath here, there's an option that allows me to edit the content of the clipping mask. And if I select that, only the text box gets selected. I'm working with 95, so I'm going to assign 95. So that gets assigned to that particular block. OK, so that one's done. So now I'm going to click on this guy here. I'm going to go to the Object drop-down menu, slide down to my clipping mask, Edit Content. That's going to be 75. I'm going to assign 75, and that gets done. Okay, go to the bottom one in here, select all of that. I'm looking at, uh, didn't name that. That should have been named. That was the one underneath 70. Actually, this should have been 65. That's right. And then the last one over here would have been 20. Okay, so we'll get that named. Okay, so come back over here, select all. Okay, so go to the object drop down menu, slide down to a compound, rather to clipping mask make, edit uh, contents. I'm working with 65, select 65. And now I'm going to go to the last one over here, 20, select that, and go down here to my clipping path edit content, and I'm going to assign the last one and hit OK. And so that really does have a nice effect. Uh, it looks like the lighter one can be opened up a little bit more uh, in terms of the spacing. So what I can do with that is I can double click on the 20% one, just to uh, oops, click on the bar part of it. You can also go to the uh, character options. That'll load it up as well. So come back over here. Now, I actually think I want to increase my tracking a little bit, so maybe a lot. So open it up and hit OK. And that that's, it cleans it up a lot as far as working with the right text. I've also found that it, it really seems to help when you have smaller text in the lighter colors. And so right now, this text in this block, in the 60 block, is a little thick and big. I'm thinking that probably should be smaller. So if I double click on the bar here, I can go to the font size. Now I'm going to make it smaller, but that means I'm also going to have to make some adjustments over here. But uh, I can kind of eyeball it. don't want it that small. So that looks OK. 
and then over here I think I'll spread that out a little bit more so so we'll hit okay so you can make some adjustments after the fact in relationship to how you want to uh, do your background okay so um, th that's it for for the three movies uh, I, the I actually started making other movies and it got a little out of control so up for simplification's sake I'm going to leave it at this and uh, I, I'm going to throw in a bonus m movie and you can look for that hopefully I'll get it done uh, sometime today but uh, as far as the three movies are concerned I'm going to call this a, a finished conclusion and uh, in the next movie that I make the bonus movie I'm going to show you how to completely separate the background away from the foreground that way you can use it uh, uh, if you want to separate that out so uh, hopefully that'll be out sooner than later